This video is sponsored by FartQuest. When someone first buys a 3D printer, one of the first questions they ask is, what filament or resin should I buy? And then they find a resin they like and they realize, oh, there's more versions of this. Which one should I buy? Is the more expensive one better than the others? What about this different type of resin by the same brand or manufacturer? Some claim to have more detail. And if I spend the extra money, is it actually gonna be worth it? Well, we're gonna do our best to answer that question in today's video with comprehensive detail comparisons, flex tests, and yes, even drop tests. Coming up after this. Hi there, I'm Danny the 3D Printing DM and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. All right, let's jump right in. Let's start with how we're testing so you can have some context when deciding whether you should buy the more expensive resin or not. To make things simple, today's tests are sticking to one brand and one line of resin. In a future video, we might include more resins, but for today, it's the Frozen Aqua line, which has both a 4K resin and an 8K resin. Price-wise, these come in at $40 with free two-day shipping with Amazon Prime for the 4K resin and $50 plus shipping costs for the 8K resin. So about $15 more per liter, which adds up very quickly. So is it worth it? Well, to find out, we'll be testing for detail via a macro photography test, flex via a bend test, and brittleness, which is gonna be done through a drop test. And we're gonna make sure to have multiple drops since that is exactly how things happen in real life. And we're gonna be using the corresponding 4K resin printer and an 8K resin printer also made by Frozen. Now, before you think this is just a promotional video for them, it's not. No money's exchanged hands to make this video. However, Frozen did send me the 8K for review purposes, but I bought the 4K myself along with the resin. That being said, I'm doing these tests using everything from one company because it's gonna remove as many variables as possible. The resin is made by the same company and this is the only printers that I found that have matching resin resolutions. So in other words, this is as fair a resin to resin test as possible. Now let's move on to the tests. Our first test was comparing the 4K resin on the 4K printer to the 4K resin on the 8K printer. Now the idea behind this was to have a control of sorts to make sure that the 8K printer was actually printing better due to the higher resolution. And as you can see by the results, this was indeed the case. Our next test was to test the same as before, only with the 8K resin instead of the 4K resin this time. While I found a minor difference, I was actually surprised that how good the 8K resin performed on the 4K. At a minimum, that dark blue gray made it really easy to see the detail. The 8K still had crisper details, right? But you can really see this around the scales, on the back, on the shoulders, on the sword engravings, and around the eyes. So these areas ended up being where I focused on for the detail test and these comparisons moving forward. For those wondering about the exposure or detail on the 4K resin prints, I can confidently say this wasn't an exposure issue because I spent several days tuning the exposure just right according to this calibration test by Table Flip Foundry which is meant for minis and mini supports. I'll probably be sharing this calibration test and more in a future video, but for now, just know I tested the of these printers and these resins before making this video. Now it was time to tell if the 8K resin worked better on the 8K printer it was intended for. Looking at these up close and under zoomed camera lens, yes, it absolutely did work better. Where I saw this most was on the scales on the shoulder and in the eye sockets. There's a softness in the 4K resin even with that 8K resolution to help it, and the 8K resin just takes it up a notch detail-wise. Now, before we move on to our last detail set, it's important to acknowledge something. Everyone 3D prints and hobbies in their own way. Some people want super detailed models, like this Dragonborn Warlock from Bite the Bullet. Link below if you think it's super cool too. Others don't need detail, and they want something stylized. And I wanna make sure to remind you that perfection and hyper detail in prints is something you don't need to have fun, okay? Now for the final comparison between the lowest resolution combo with the highest resolution combo. The 4K printer with 4K resin against the 8K printer and 8K resin. Now if you haven't really seen the difference yet, I hope this one's clear. There's a really big difference between these two. I think the jump between the 4K printer and the 8K printer together with the 8K resin really makes the detail difference incredible. And if you're looking to upgrade from your 4K or lower resolution printer, I think this is absolutely a combo you should consider. It's time for the flex test. 
But first, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, FartQuest. FartQuest is an epic fantasy adventure book series aimed at 8 to 12 year old kids. It contains an epic journey, powerful wizards, mighty warriors, elves, dwarves, and one metric buttload of monsters. Oh yeah, and there's some potty humor in there too. The author, Aaron Reynolds, is a longtime dungeon master and mini painter and has written this series not only as a love letter to D&D, but as a heartfelt and hilarious intro for kids to all things fantasy and even 3D printing. And I mean that because I've been reading it with my 8 year old daughter and everything in it from the illustrations the layout, the themes, they are perfect for this. It's also a really great way to get your little ones interested in 3D printing because each of the four main Fart Quest characters has their own 3D printable models thanks to a partnership with Dice Heads Miniatures. For the next three months, these models are also available as exclusive minis for all tribes and Patreon members as a free gift. So feel free to check out Dice Heads and subscribe to their fantastic family-friendly minis. You can also purchase these models individually at the Dice Heads My Mini Factory store. And don't forget to check out the latest Far Quest book, Barf of the Bedazzler, which just came out in the links down below. Thanks for supporting YouTube creators Far Quest, and now let's get back to those flex tests. For the flex test, we tested the most fragile part of the mini and the one most likely to bend. You guessed it, the sword specifically at the base where it is most likely to break rather than bend. We use this printed out protractor to gauge how many degrees the sword would bend before breaking. Now, something really interesting happened here with the flex tests. As we did them one by one, we noticed all of them actually wanted to go beyond what the mini's bodies would allow. Just look at all four of them being tested in real time and watch closely. All of them broke between 180 degrees and 190 degrees. In my opinion, the sword could probably have flexed further in each of these cases if it had been in a straight pull, but we're testing a real mini and this ain't a lab, so that. These results mean there wasn't a significant difference in flexibility for each of these resins and printer types. They were all equally very flexible, especially since the two that did the best were basically at opposite ends of the pairings. And now we can go on to the funnest test, the drop tests. To test how brittle these resins were, i.e. how easily these prints shattered when dropped, we dropped each of these minis from one feet, then two feet, then three feet, and so on until 10 feet, higher than my ladder. Of course, the bases, the only part that were glued on, came off after about three to four feet. But beyond that, these minis all basically survived 10 foot drops, and most only had a few scratches by the end. To say I was impressed was an incredible understatement. I've never seen this kind of result without any flexible resin being mixed in. It was crazy, seriously. The worst damage we got on any of these was a chunk of the face that fell off and no chance of plastic surgery. I'm sorry, little lizard man, your fangs were beautiful. All right, if you wanna get technical, the AK resin performed better, but not by much if I can be honest, the results felt very similar to me seeing these drops happen live. So the big question, is the more expensive resin better than the cheaper one? In this case, yes. The AK resin is better in every one of our test categories to the 4K resin, even on a 4K printer. But the better question is, is it worth it? Well, that depends on what is most important to you. The AK resin is slightly more resistant to drops based on our test, but the AK resin only pulled ahead by a small amount. And since both resins are incredibly flexible and incredibly resistant to drops, this really ends up being about cost and detail. If that extra bit of detail is a must for you and you're okay paying the extra cost for both the AK resin printer and or the AK resin, then the AK resin is gonna be the better choice for you. If the cost is a big barrier to you, then I don't feel the difference is enough to justify the cost. But I absolutely understand those of you who have no problem paying the premium for the better results. I really enjoyed making this video and if you wanna see me make similar videos with other resin comparisons, I'd love to know which ones and which brands you'd be most interested in. So please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna support us, the best way to do so is to pick up a late pledge on our website and become a patron over on Patreon. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord and behind the scenes content. And I'd like to give a special thanks to our top patrons for their generous support. If you wanna support the channel at no additional cost to you, you can also make any purchase using the affiliate links below, which will also help us keep making videos at no extra cost to you. All right, I'll see you next time. Happy printing and happy gaming.